1975 and um, we've been in Alberta exclusively until August of, of this past year. Um, our book's at 130 million right now uh, and about 40% of that is made up of financing. And you wanna, Sam, you wanna mute there? There we go. <laughs> Um, so yeah, 40% of our book is made up of flips and people who are doing burrs. Um, we're really interested in, in assisting with that type of stuff. And, uh, what kind of separates us is we do our own in-house, uh, valuations and appraisals at no cost to you. And we do those within hours, uh, as well as we have the ability to close using just one lawyer. So, uh, it just speeds things up. Um, and, uh, we know that flips are all about speed. So we're really just looking for your profitability and, uh, making sure we assist you in any way that we can. Okay, good. So that's a good intro. And I, I like the speed part. I mean, typically lenders are super slow. Trying yeah. So just to give you a, like, we've, we're very new to the Ontario market. When we first started, we were closing things in about a week. Uh, now we're starting to close files within two days. Um, so it's, it's a very quick process. I would have been happy with a week too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, that was slow for us. So, you know, it's a couple days and most lawyers are in tune with what we do. Uh, and yeah, they, they really enjoy working with us. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Uh, okay, good. So let's, now that we had a bunch of people on here, let's share the screen and I'm recording by the way. Uh, so if anyone has to jump off or whatever, I can always get you this recording. So this is a tool that Garrett provided me and it's a tool now that I'm using almost weekly here, doing some analysis on some deals. So I'll go through an example. So the first thing I kind of do and Garrett's more proficient with this so we can go over it with him in a second, but I'll tell you what I do. So the first thing I do is I, I get my estimated purchase price in there. So the deal I'm looking at was in Brantford and it was for a property that obviously needed some renovations and the price was 495,000, okay? And uh, with some rentals, it'll be a two unit property and the after repair value will be somewhere uh, around $700,000, okay? So those are the kind of the first two boxes I kind of put in. And then the down payment, which I'll let Garrett touch on all the down payment structures, uh, they're able to do uh, a mortgage for you guys at a, with a minimum of $20,000 down payment. Is that correct, Garrett? Yeah, that's correct. Um, so I can go into that a little bit, but uh, we have the ability to provide you with financing with as little as 20 grand down. Uh, and obviously that's at a very high loan to value for us. So it's a higher risk for us, but you are more than welcome to put more money down and that reduces the interest rate. But what most flippers have told us is they'd rather put less down and do multiple projects at a time and keep capital in their pockets uh, to be able to hop on those next uh, good deals. Uh, absolutely. I, I think that's the draw for a lot of people here. Um, so, uh, at the 20, and again, later in this call, Garrett will go over the down payment structures and what the financing or the interest structures are interest rates, but at a minimum of 20,000 down, you're going to pay an interest rate of about 15 and a half percent. Okay. And there's going to be a finance fee of 2% of the loan amount. So that stuff's sort of pre-filled in for you. And if you were to up your down payment, you could adjust the interest rate down as it reduces the risk for the lender. Right, but for now I have it at the lowest down payment because that's what I like to. <laughs> so, but think about it for a second. If, if I'm going to go purchase a property for four hundred and ninety-five thousand today or tomorrow, I'm going to have to put some money down as a deposit somewhere in the neighborhood of twenty to twenty-five thousand anyway. So essentially, as long as you can prove that you put down a deposit with your offer of at least twenty or twenty-five thousand, you know you're. <clears throat> you're basically taking care of your, your, your down payment and, you know, you might have some legal fees at closing, but your down payment is done. We'll cover the uh, assignment fee as well. Like we, we include that. Um, so, so your 20,000 down is really 20,000 down, even if you're buying it from a wholesaler, which, which banks wouldn't consider. 
Yes, and that's the other major thing I wanted to touch on, that if you're buying from a wholesaler, uh, Garrett's program with Calvert, they'll include the wholesaling fee into the mortgage. So, uh, so this is where I start. I put in the purchase price I'm putting in now, what I believe the active repair market after the ARV to be, you know, based on my own research, uh, the minimum down payment, this interest uh, rate structure is pre-filled in, and but you can adjust it if necessary. Then I kind of go here and I, I look at the, the timeline because this is also very important. So if I'm closing today, I'm asking myself two things. How long is it going to take me to renovate the property? In this case, I have here two months. And then how many months is it to sell? So from the day I finish the property, how long is it going to take me to sell? I know, and, and months to sell really should say uh, months to close, uh, another way to think about it. So if I list it today, you know, I might get a sale tomorrow because the market's insane here, but they might not close for 30 or 60 days, right? So in total, that's four months, okay? And I put my renovation budget down here. I believe it's going to cost uh, about 60000 to get it to the place that uh, I want to go, Okay. And then uh, most of it's kind of done, but uh, up here, you know, you, you, you can put in some of your legal costs, uh, land transfer tax, and you know, the kind of minutia fees that kind of add up here, because you, you want to know all that stuff. And then your selling costs, you can input the amount it's going to cost you to sell if you're using a realtor on the back end. Like if I'm going to sell this property immediately for 700,000, I'm going to list it on MLS, and take offers from, you know, another agent, then I'm going to have to pay them a commission. So I can put in whatever, you know, commission I want here. Okay. Uh, what else? And then some operating costs here. So while you own the property for the period of four months, I mean, you're going to have to pay some utilities and property taxes, et cetera, insurance. And these are all, it gives you space here to input those costs. So you've covered everything. And you, again, you can adjust electrical and gas. There's just an assumption here. And, and then those automatically adjust as you change the time frame. So if you change that time frame, the renovation budget, if it goes longer, then those numbers will automatically adjust. Yeah. So I just change it to three months and the numbers change down there, right? And at the end of this call, when I send you guys a recording, I'll give you guys a copy of this so you can play with it yourselves. And, and, and I suggest use it because it's a fantastic tool. So once you have all that data in there, and it looks like a lot, but it's, it's really not, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Once you got that data in here, you can go down to the summary and everything's kind of broken down. So based on all my costs, interest, everything, legals, carrying costs, it looks like my profit's gonna be about $72,000, okay? Total cash needed about 115, that's based on the down payment, based on my renovation budget, based on my carrying costs, legal costs, all that kind of stuff. That's all accounted for right there. You know, and it tells you what your return is. Based on my cash, I'm getting a 62% return. Uh, cash invested, 188. The ratio of cost to ARV, you know, 19%. And variable monthly cost. So if you're going to hold it for four months, you know you got to have at least that much uh, sitting there uh, uh, to carry yourself for, you know, two, three, four, five months, six months, whatever it's going to be. Okay. And this, I, I like this, this project summary, cost summary thing too, because it, it sort of breaks down where most of the money is going. And as you can see here, out of my $115,000 budget, you know, most of it's going toward renovations and financing and then sell those, those pesky realtors take, take their money too, right? And, uh, uh, and, and this is a very neat tool to really make, make, you're flipping business much more professional. And even if you're only doing one or two flips a year and it's not a real business for you, this is even more important for you because you really want to nail down what your profits are and, and make sure that you're going to be profitable. And if you're, and my big thing is like the lenders are obviously not stupid. They're going to do the same analysis for you. And if you're not profitable, they might not lend to you. <laughs> so this is as yeah. important as it gets for your bottom line and for your financing, right? Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing for us being the lender is, are you gonna make money? We we don't wanna see any of our clients losing money because you're not gonna come back to us if you lose a big sum of money. Uh, you're gonna say, what the hell? Like we did this analysis. Um, 
So we're going to give you a second opinion of what we think the value is for one. So you get to see, hey, based on the comps that we used, we came up with this value. And then we're going to fill out this spreadsheet the same way that Paul's doing here uh, and make sure that in the end, it's profitable considering all costs. Yeah, that's great. Um, we'll, we'll, someone asked if you could speak up. We're doing our best to, to, to speak up as loud as we can. Try and turn up your speakers. And again, this will be recorded. And uh, what was your question here? Uh, uh, are, are, uh, they're monthly payments, right? They're not balloon payments? Yeah, that's right. So it's monthly payments. Yeah. Just in interest only payments. Yeah. So Mark, they'll expect interest only payments, not a balloon payment for the interest. Okay. Not a balloon payment for the interest. So is there anything I was missing here, Mark, that, or sorry, Garrett, that we should cover? Uh, or Not really. Uh, no, you went through it all uh, perfectly. And like you said, the main boxes that you need to uh, kind of adjust is box E and box F. Yeah. Uh, those are the two main ones that uh, numbers will change based on your purchase price uh, after repaired value and how long it's going to take. But other than that, the rest of it auto populates based on those numbers. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously things will change if you get discounts on, on, on anything like your uh, legal costs or a realtor costs or anything like that, then, then you can adjust those boxes accordingly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're looking at your costs here, I mean, if you're able to sell it privately afterward, I mean, all the power to you, you must have a monster network. Um, but you, you're going to want to account for that. Um, but it's, yeah, I, one thing that's super important to us is having the right team in place if you're flipping houses or doing burrs. So we always say that having a good realtor on your side is going to pay for itself. So having Paul, who does flips and everything like that, yeah, it's super important in our mind um, to have that on your side. Absolutely. And then for me, it's always timing. Like if I can get in and out of the deal, in less time or it takes me, you know, exactly. one, so watch this. If, if it only takes me one month to renovate, I'll come back to your question in a sec. If it only takes me one month to renovate, watch the profit. Okay. That's an extra almost $7,000 there. So versus two months because you're carrying it for longer and there's, you know, carrying costs. And, uh, you know, in my world, that's a better ROI because I'm getting my money back a month faster and I can do another flip, you know, uh, it might, might maybe gets me an extra flip and an extra, you know, deal done before the end of the year. And that's, that's obviously very profitable. So let's go to some questions here. Uh, do you uh, lend? No, when, when you lend, will you register the mortgage if, if the property is being held in the corporation? Absolutely. Yeah. We understand that uh, a lot of people do this as a business. So uh, when you, Put it in a corporation the title we're happy to lend to a corporation um one other thing i should mention is we have the ability to pre-approve our clients on a personal and corporate basis we get app credit and your most recent notice of assessment uh, and then we pre-approve you on a personal basis so that when you find a property the process is that much quicker and we can act quick yeah i've already sent a pile of documents into garrett so he's got my stuff already. So if I find a, a property I want to flip tomorrow, you know, we just need to go through this analysis and make sure, you know, the deal is going to be profitable. They're going to do their own in-house appraisal, which we'll talk about yeah. in a second. And, you know, they're going to fund your deal. Yeah. So it, there's no harm in, in getting the app and the credit and notice of assessment on file so that when you do find a project in the future, we can act, like I said, really quick and, and look at the project itself. Okay, Dan, uh, what would be the down if you picked it up for 145? I'm not, I'm not sure I understand your question. Dan. I'm guessing if you, I'm guessing the question is, is if um, you got the property for 145, it's still 20 grand down. Um, and we, we can do uh, we can do financing with twenty grand down all the way up to a purchase price of eight hundred thousand. Once it goes over eight hundred thousand, we want to see a little bit more down. Uh, and when I say a little bit more, I'm talking like 30, 40 grand. We're not talking um, twenty percent down. It's just a little bit more because the risk is a little higher based on a higher purchase price. 
Okay, cool. Yes, I remember that for the first deal we were looking at. Yeah. Uh, Bruce, what's happening, buddy? Is two months rental taking into account the time to obtain permits? So this this particular property, Bruce, uh, it wasn't something I needed to convert. It was already a, a, a legal or non-conforming to unit property. So I didn't need to get permits for it to do the renovation. It's simply cosmetics. Um, but yes, uh, if... So for all those people out there who are thinking this same question, if I'm buying a property in Ontario and I'm looking to do to apply for permits to convert the basement to a legal suite or do whatever with permits, I'm going to apply for the permits before closing. Okay, that's we don't want to wait 30, 60, 90 days and then apply for permits. That's insanity, especially the way it is now. Uh, and the city is moving so slowly. They're already slow. They're even slower now. So yeah. Yeah, the offer, we're going to ask the seller to, for permission to apply for permits and ask that the seller uh, uh, sign any documents that allow us to get access to a survey and start the permit process. Yeah, um, Paul's, Paul's got a bang on. Um, like typically what we see from our real estate investors is they're doing stuff that typically doesn't require permits. Um, it's more just simple renovations that they can do quickly. Um, but when it does come to permits and that is more profitable than exactly what Paul said, you want to do that beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be paying 7,000 a month to carry it for no. three months while you get permits. I hope that makes sense, Bruce. Uh, Stephanie, so what exactly do you require when you request financing? When we request financing. So what we like to do, I'll just go through the process again, but we like to get the app credit and notice of assessment on file right away. Then we have you ready to go personally. After that, what we wanna see is we want to get um, a detailed renovation budget and information about your rentals so that we can value the property as if complete. Cause we're basing this whole thing on once the rentals are done, what is it worth? And what we'll need to go with that is some comparables which Paul will be able to provide to us, I believe, yeah. uh, on that side of things. So those are the main things. And then the final thing is, is we want to see that you have the funds to do this. So what you would need is the 20 grand down at a minimum. You can put more down, like I said, and then you buy down our risk. Uh, and then the rental costs and the carrying costs. So we want to see that you have that. And that can be by way of bank statements, by line of credit, by a HELOC, a JV partner. It can be lots of different ways. We just want to see that you have the funds to do it. Okay. So pretty simple stuff. Uh, Zoe, what's typical ARV used? How do I know how much I will need for a down payment? So that sounds like two questions there. So what, what Garrett said there is the minimum down payment you're going to need on almost any deal that gets approved is at least 20% or at least 20,000 down. Sorry, 20,000. And if you get above uh, 800,000, they're going to ask you for, you know, and it's a yeah, case, by case, case by case when it goes above that. Yes. But and we want to support a profitable deal. So we'll, we'll look at that. Like I said, case by case basis. The ARV percent of ARV. I don't know. So I'm, I think you're talking about loan to value. So they're, they're not looking at loan to value. They're looking at an absolute minimum of 20,000 down for any deal under 800,000 that they approve. Yeah. Uh, what if, Oh, what if your client, what if my credit is not great? That's okay. We don't have a minimum credit requirement. Um, so that's not a big part of it. We, we will ask some questions just to say, hey, like what happened here? Um, but the biggest thing for us in our underwriting is one, do you have the funds to do it? And two, are you going to be profitable? Those are the two biggest things. Getting the personal information, we might ask a couple of questions, but the nice thing is, is you get to deal with me directly. I'm also the underwriter. So um, anytime you want to call me and we discuss, uh, we're a relationship-based company. So we want to we want to be able to help out our clients in any way we can. Okay, Chucky, uh, how do you land on flips for small apartments? Chuck, if you buy an apartment building, why would you want to flip it? Right? <laughs> It's a good question though. So this brings up another point is we only go to four doors on one property. Interesting. Right now. Uh, we might increase that in the future, but right now we're only going to four doors. Okay. Well, but that's not, that's not to say you can't have 
six properties at one time with us. That's fine. It's just one single property can't be more than four doors. Got it. Okay. Um, would you want the articles for the corporation? Yes, we need to see that uh, you are the sole owner of the corporation. And if you're not, then we're going to need information on the other shareholders of the corporation. <laughs> okay, I see two awesome questions coming. What if we have half the rental budget and we want to use an ARV loan for the other half? So what we can do in instances where you need some more funds is we can look to blanket another property to provide you with more funds for rentals. Uh, so if you have another property that you're, you have as a rental or you're living in and you have equity in that property, we can blanket mortgage against both of those and provide you with some funds for the renovations. So we can look, we can look at it a lot of different unique ways to make things work. Okay, good answer. Mark, I'm gonna adjust your question a bit here. Can we use credit cards or a line of credit for rentals to qualify for the program? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we just have to know where it's coming from. So if we see on your credit that you have a bunch of available balances, you can absolutely use that stuff for, for the rentals. Okay. Um, and guys, don't be shy and gals, if you had a, you don't, you can unmute yourself. We, we, we want to see your face if you have a question. But if there's no more questions, oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just asking, hi, everybody. So quick question. Um, you mentioned, I sorry, I hopped, I hopped on a little late. You mentioned that we need to have the funds for um, the Renault. So what exactly do you guys do if we have the funds for it? Uh, we're just looking to see if you have the funds for it. So we just need to see that you have the funds in any form um, for the down payment, the rentals and the carrying costs. And if you have that, then we just need to make sure the project is profitable. And then we're likely to move forward with you and we want to build on the relationship. So when I said that we like to pre-approve our clients on a personal basis, mm -hmm. we get the credit in NOA. Um, we likely don't need to get that again for at least another year and maybe even longer than that. So once okay. we have that on file once, it's just about the property moving forward. Okay, so I, I still think I probably, I'm not clear. So if I have the funds, would I not just use the funds? Like, <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to get, you yeah. know what I mean? I'm you, trying to you get use, it. You, you use your own funds for the rent. Pardon? You need to prove you use your own funds. funds. Oh. Sorry, go ahead, Paul. Sorry, uh, you just need to prove that you have the funds. I mean, you, you need to prove that you have the down payment and the funding to, to do the rentals. Yes, you use your own. So yes, you would, you would use your own funds for the rentals. Okay, so you are just lending to acquire the property. That's right. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I got you, I got you. Yeah. I got you. Okay, good, good. So we, we structured it that way because we want to provide you with as much as possible up front. So you don't have to deal with us on getting funds for the renos. Um, it's much easier for you to have it in your pocket and you can do it as quickly as possible. Okay, gotcha. Uh, Hello? Go ahead. Yeah, so I, okay, I guess just following on uh, Zoe's comments, just listening as well, I guess I thought that you would also look at the after repair value and you'd lend us up to say 80% of that. And so if there were money after securing the property uh, that you know, if there was still room to tap for rentals, then we could do that. But you're saying even if there's room after acquiring the property, we wouldn't be able to tap that for rentals, we'd have to just have the funds ourselves. Yeah, so you would have to have the funds yourself for all the rentals unless there was another property that we could blanket um, that you have equity in, and then we might be able to go above the purchase price, but we're never going to lend above the purchase price. Um, it just wouldn't make sense for us in a risk standpoint. Okay, good. Um, oh, um, Gary, can we go over, do you have something you can share that just shows that uh, a chart with kind of all the down payments and what the interest rate would be at the certain down payments? Yeah, I can find that here. So 
So if you logged on late, uh, I'll share the recording with everybody. So not to worry. Okay. Yeah, and right now I saw that there was a question about construction. We don't do construction for, um, for uh, uh, new builds or anything like that. But if you are doing a garden suite, we can consider that sort of thing, um, but not, not from the ground up for a whole new build. Uh, okay. So Lori, they, they'll they'll go they'll, they'll do twenty thousand down payment up to uh, eight hundred thousand. Beyond eight hundred thousand, they're going to ask you for you know thirty or forty thousand down payment, which is still. Can you can you great. see this, Paul? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. So yeah, this is the down payment based on or sorry rates based on down payment. So like I said, if you're putting more down, you're buying down our risk. Um, so if you're putting the minimum amount down, it's going to be at a high interest rate, but if you're putting a lot down and you have cash available, then it might make sense to put more down and buy it down to 7.99. All these rates, uh, or all these terms are fully open and their first six month term. If you do go over that six months, if your mortgage is in good standing, we're going to renew at no cost. So there's no issue there, but we hope that you complete the projects quicker than that, because as Paul showed you there, obviously it's all about speed and getting it done quicker is just going to make you more money. Okay. So uh, again, take a screenshot of this if you want, but you know, we'll, we'll maybe Garrett will send me a little cheat sheet on this that I can share with you guys and uh, give you the recording also, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get it to you when we're ready. Quick, quick question. Yeah. Uh, so if you if you are open to cross collateralizing on another property, does it matter where the property is? Uh, yeah, it does. Um, we're look we live throughout Ontario, um, oh. so there's no issues with uh, with more rural properties, but we are trying to focus more on urban centers with more than fifty thousand people. Okay. Uh, it gets outside of there then we might be a little more cautious but um, if there's equity in the property and we can see that then we're gonna look to blanket that give you more funds and potentially give you better rates as well got it Charmel, uh, what type of lender is calvert mortgages a b or c yeah so we're a mortgage investment corporation um so I guess you could classify us as a private mortgage. Um, but if you speak with lawyers or anything in Ontario, uh, and we have done that, uh, they classify us more as, they're not really sure to be honest, but they do deal with us like the banks because they are acting for both us and the clients. So we have access to about, I think it's about 12 lawyers right now um, who can act for both ourselves and the clients, which saves you a lot of time and typically about 1500 bucks per transaction. And obviously the lawyers are in Ontario. Yeah. Yeah. They're all in Ontario. Cool. Well, that's helpful. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Stephanie, the broker fee is uh, 2%. Is that correct, Eric? That's correct. Yeah. The, the lender fee. Yeah. And Stephanie, that's built into the, the spreadsheet, the profit model that I showed you uh, in the beginning of this call there. So that's uh, it's, it's, it's it, it, you're the, the expense is built in and the profit is after the, um, after the broker fee. Uh, what else do we have here? On, on a conversion for a duplex. Yeah. Would you do the refinance at the end? Yeah. So we, we wouldn't do the refinance. We highly suggest you either go through a mortgage broker or speak with your bank about that. Um, there's no extra cost to come through a mortgage broker with us. Um, sometimes it's nicer to deal directly, but uh, there's no issues with that. Um, we don't do the, the, um, 
the as complete refinance because we're just a short term lender. We want to see you in and out as quickly as possible because obviously the rates are higher. Okay. Yeah, there's lots of lenders out there who will do it for you, Dan. Especially when it's all done and permitted and rented and all that kind of stuff. What else, guys? Any other questions? Yeah, so I see some on here, but yes, we lend in Windsor. Um, I've done lots of stuff there. Uh, it must be a ripe market. Huh? So it must be a ripe market for you guys to go and, and do some private. Yeah. Somebody yeah, we've, uh, we're going to have some case studies coming out soon. Like I said, we started this flip finance program in Ontario in August. So most have just finished up and we'll, we'll have some case studies to show, but there's some pretty impressive profits so far from some of the real estate investors that have worked with us. And the more we do business with you, the easier it becomes. Like uh, in Alberta, my best client did 13 deals last year. And we've gotten to the point now that I know him so well that all he does is provide me with a purchase contract and how much he's going to spend on renovations. We do an in-house value in an hour. We send it off to the lawyers and it funds in a day or two. Wow. So the more we just get to know you and the, the better we feel with how things are going and you make profit on the first one and then we keep going on that, it just becomes a really easy process. Okay, Mark. Carrying costs are high with this program. No complaints, but would lipstick rentals still be profitable? Well, it, Mark, that, that's down to you kind of making a business out of it. I mean, I would rather do lipstick rentals than than anything else. But uh, if you can, if you're buying it at the right price, then you know, lend, getting using private lending for two, three, or four months really shouldn't make or break your deal. If the lender yeah. make or break your deal, then the deal was bad to begin with. Yeah, if you if you think about it this way, there's a, there's a few things. One is 15.5 is essentially 1.29% per month. It's better to state it on a monthly basis because a flip is not going to take a year. And if you're doing a lipstick reno, it's probably only going to take three months max to fully to do it and then sell it. Um, the other thing is, is if you go to a bank and you actually tell them that you're flipping houses, they're not going to lend to you. Um, they don't want that short-term financing. Uh, they want the long-term stuff. And then again, you got to take into account that you have to put the 20 grand down. Uh, you have to tell them that you're moving into it or, or renting it or something like that. Uh, and if you do more and more, they're going to get to know what you're doing. Uh, and then there's going to be pay penalties as well. So there's a lot of things to consider uh, when, when uh, looking at this rate and saying, oh, it looks high, but really... If you're doing them quick, we'll be able to show you soon with a lot of different case studies like Paul showed you too on the flip analyzer that there's a lot of profit to be made. Yeah, like if, if you plan on doing two, three, four, five flips a year, uh, you, the, the banks are gonna laugh at you. <laughs> you might get one or two or three done. After that, you're going back to private financing no matter what. So you're better off, I would say to start with a build a relationship with you know even one or two private lenders so you're never uh, you're never short money right uh, that's that's the way these professional flippers do 10 12 13 a year right oh, and more sometimes so Dan I see on here Elliot Lake I'll be honest with you I have no idea where that is <laughs> um, but what I will say is we want to deal with real estate investors who have experience, if they don't, we're still gonna work with them. But if you have experience and there's a profit to be made in those areas, then we wanna be able to work with you. Um, so I'll do my due diligence. We'll look into the area and uh, see what we're dealing with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anybody else? Okay. So is there anything else that we didn't cover, Garrett, or that we should know about the program? Well, I, I think it's our, our care for our clients is our biggest thing. Um, there, there's not many lenders that we know of that we do a borrower interview on every single file. We want to get to know our clients. We want to make sure they make money. We do the in-house values by doing that. We don't get third-party appraisals, which honestly sometimes can be somewhat biased. Uh, and they'll just go based on 
uh, what you tell them to. It's like, hey, I need to come in at this number. I need to come at this number. And they're likely going to do that because they want to please their clients. For us, we're just going to do it and let you know, hey, we don't think this is the right project. Um, right now, it seems like every project is the right project in Ontario uh, because of the market being so hot. But we're going to have those discussions and we welcome the uh, conversation for you to prove us wrong too. Uh, to say, hey, I think you're off on this. My rentals are going to be nicer than what you're thinking, that sort of stuff. So we're just a, we're a lender that truly cares. We want to build on relationships. We've done, we do the in-house values. We do the um, one lawyer on closing. Uh, so it just makes it cheaper for you and quicker process. Um, yeah, I don't think there's much more than that. Good stuff. Uh... Oh, percent of applicants that get approved. <laughs> uh, the, definitely the majority. Uh, there's not many that haven't. What we, what we do as part of our due diligence, I think the only one that we've really turned down uh, in Ontario was a guy that I, we, we Google searched and the guy was in jail. So <laughs> we, we declined him. <laughs> Um, but for the most part, yeah, it's, it's more your experience with flipping, um, and, uh, just getting to know you and how you're going to do your renovations. Is it going to be you personally doing the work or do you have trades set up, uh, who are going to help you with it? Um, just having those conversations and, and really I'd say 99% are approved on the personal basis. We want to make sure we review the property as well. That's great. So you know, now there's no excuses. If you find a good deal and you can flip it and you think there's money there, now you're going to get the money. And there's no complaining about, you know, the lenders suck. So <laughs> we've got options. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Paul, you can feel free to either, you can pass on my contact info or the, and I can send you the application or whatever. And what we need is just the application filled out in its entirety uh, and once it's signed at the bottom, we pull a credit bureau, uh, and then it's, uh, getting your 2019 NOA. And then on the personal basis, you're approved, uh, likely. Uh, and then, uh, we're just seeing if you have the money to do it in the future and, uh, just the experience to be able to, to be profitable. Okay. Uh, I, I think is send me a little bit of a cheat sheet with those rates or, and, you know, some other information yeah. you can share with people. Obviously, I'll share your contact. I'll share the, the, the spreadsheet. And I think that'll give uh, everybody the opportunity to contact you if, you know, when yeah, and what's nice is, like I said, you get to deal with me directly too. Like I'm not, maybe I'll hand it off for a second to get the documents in order and stuff like that. But I'm going to be the one doing the underwriting and stuff like that. We have five underwriters at our office and, and growing. Um, but for now, I'll be able to handle uh, all of your files. Okay. So uh, if there's a, not any more questions, I think we'll, uh, we'll say thanks to Garrett and uh, we'll finish it off. Uh, I hope it was valuable for everyone. Again, I'll share the recording and all the other stuff I just promised uh, as soon as Garrett sends that stuff to me. Great. So, thanks for joining. And uh, I, I think everybody here has my email if you need to reach me. Uh, other than that, have a good day and uh, talk soon. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Thanks, Garrett. Ciao. Thanks, everyone. Thank